Welcome to the Climate Conscious Podcast, where we discuss all things sustainable. Joining me today is Babita Dubey. Hello, Babita. Welcome to the podcast. Oh, hi, the Voltax. I'm inviting me. So, Babita is the founder and innovator behind My Beach, My Water. She holds a master's in environmental engineering and a bachelor's of chemical and process engineering. Her background is in the oil and gas industry, working in areas such as produced water management and industrial wastewater treatment. Her interests include writing, gardening, and swimming. My Beach My Water provides information services about the beach, allowing the user to have a safe, sustainable, and enjoyable experience on the beach. So what is the story behind My Beach My Water? My Beach My Water really came about in 2014 out of a startup weekend in Trinidad and in Port of Spain. When I was based on the experience I had prior when I was on a business trip in Cancun. I was there for a while and so we just had a small time to do recreational stuff and I decided to go on the beach and evening we had a break with some of the other people from the conference i remember there were some people from the middle east and one of the fellows said that they really respect the ocean so they never go in the water because they they think that it's so powerful and that kind of thing so he sat on the shore and there was another person in the water at the same time with me and i felt the water was rising a bit and then he asked if i was okay and i realized it was rising some more and they actually pulled me out because the other fellow on on the shoreline, it was like an anchor, and they could they hold hands, and they pulled me out. And soon after that, some girls behind me started just to scream, and the lifeguard went in. So then I realized that I was now aware of my surroundings. Like, normally if I'm on Maracas, like, you'd see where the red flags are, but I didn't know where the flags were and stuff on the beach in Cancun. I got to think that normally, like, I didn't even have my phone before I go went into the water. I would actually be aware of my phone but sometimes not aware of some of the things around in a new environment so when i was at the startup weekend it was a startup weekend that was set up to pitch ideas for google glass at the time when google glass was still on the market so we really were hoping that we could find some way to link with your phone and like if you have google shades on and so if you put it on you kind of i get a, a snapshot of what were the dangers on the beach maybe like some red flags would come up Okay. On, on the screen but the technology to do that was was far reaching so then we decided okay well we will just at least start putting information about the beach on on the app that was at a, a pitch for startup weekend and then so we, we didn't really go forward with the idea until 2015 when i met one of the fellows who helped me work with with the app at that startup weekend i said well do you want to try out this thing to take it forward and we agreed to try something out and then the hearse had a competition for scientific was the prime minister's award for scientific ingenuity and innovation and we entered the competition and we won a small like we didn't win the top prizes but we won one of the prizes so we got some funding to work a little bit more on on the work what we were doing and from there we started to um, look at ways to bring in revenue streams and always when we we were dealing with safety on the beach we also look at environmental conservation marine life you know making sure that we don't harm anything on the beach that we leave it as we see it so out of that like i started to think about well how i felt about the ocean and to be in balance and harmony with it in addition to the information services my beach my water also offers sustainable products what makes a product sustainable china tobago is the number one polluted um, areas in terms of the, the waters of, outside the coast in terms of plastic per capita in the whole world. And the Caribbean region on the whole is very much leader in that. And Trinidad is the top leader in that in that respect. So the first thing we really wanted to target was to reduce the amount of plastic waste that goes out there. We work around the forest so, so, to reduce, reuse, recycle, and then if not, recover. But we're really trying to change the way people think about how they, they do things. And on the beach and on the whole and the overall lifestyle, it being a small island. So, yeah. so we really want people to, to not have things to throw away. So our products are to surround that, that as well as enjoying the beach and, and enjoying the Caribbean and the island life. So we had, um, we've saved sunscreen, sunscreen that doesn't affect corals 
and, and after San Lucian, it was very natural, highly coconut based. But we would sell it in glass bottles, and people could return the glass bottles for us to refill it. And we tried to find products like that, where, where they had probably glass or something that you could reuse and refill and return to us, as well as things that have very little packaging. So we sell a lot of artisan soaps that could be used as shampoo and conditioner scrubs that have no wrapping on whatsoever. So you can just find out from us online what the ingredients are and what it's about, what the meters are not get. But we don't have anything on the soaps and stuff themselves. Yes. So it's basically like taking a liquid shampoo and liquid conditioner and put it into a solid form. Okay. So again, you don't have to have a plastic bottle to throw away or any wrapping and that kind of thing. We also make it with stuff that you use on, sorry, if you use on the beach, you don't have any chemicals that would go into the ocean because there's a lot of, you know, on the beach, it's like if you look at Maracas, say there's not any kind of big water treatment. If you if you have to shower there, the water would go into the ocean or into Tobago. It would have much treatment before. We try to reduce that in, in that sense too. So those are some of our major products, the, the sunscreen, the after sun, and the different, either, either soap-based bars or the non-soap-based ones. It's solid, but solid shampoo bars. So, Barbita, on one hand, persons may not see the need for eco-friendly products, maybe due to a lack of awareness of the benefits, you know, which is one thing this podcast is trying to address, you know, raising awareness so that people become more mindful of their consumer habits. But on the other hand, where there are persons who are interested in eco-friendly options, these products may not be readily available or they may be at a significantly higher cost. Based on your experience, what has been the response to My Beach, My Water? Well, right now, in terms of the reach, we could increase the, the, the reach to the people in the market for them to know about what we're doing because we, um, we are a very small startup in terms of the, um, the money we have available. It's really a, other than price from the users, it's a self-funded um, business so far. But we, so we, we started off actually our first year is mainly in the UE. We approached the, the principal's office and the different um, groups there that would have been the relevant authorities to get permission. So my first real sales really started off a lot on actually going on campus and doing my own little mini pop-up. It was really interesting because then I would actually meet all the students and the people and that age group of people who are now in university would be the, the leaders in going eco-friendly. So that age group of people are really mindful about making those changes. And in terms of affordability, uh, our products are very cheap in that because we, we also cut our soups. I, I then have been to one new fire festival so far. I don't know if you know about the fire festival. Yes, I've heard of it. So it's um it's a very niche market for us, but we do really well there because we are, we fill that niche very strongly. Uh, so it's a zero waste festival. So they're very strong on not having any single use plastic at the festival and it was being planned for this year pre COVID and it was gonna be even stronger where they were not they were actually going to encourage people to come in and give a deposit and maybe you could use the, a bowl and just rinse the bowl back and put it there and you know you could if you want something you could get back the money after and that kind of thing if you return something that you use uh, and so at that at that festival I, I really got a lot of fan base as well from cutting soap and if you come in you just have five dollars and you need a little piece of soap to, to, to use on the campsite I was able to cut it for people so we do size things in and pack it well we're not necessarily packaged but give people it in the, in the size and that they could afford our sunscreen first we started it off it was it was more expensive in that you paid for a glass bottle but you could get the rebate for the glass bottle when you return it to us right and so that would then eventually bring down the cost over the time but we did like so we've been looking at things that so then we reduced the size of the sunscreen same, same. so it's, it was a two ounce bottle now we have it available in one ounce sizes um, you could really fill things in vessels all you want. So you reduce the cost by having no packaging. So if somebody really wanted our sunscreen, we could, you know, say, okay, this is how much for the actual fluid. And you could bring your bottle or something and we could fill it so that you don't have any cost for a bottle. We have been able to get things that are affordable. I do also do a lot of um, bamboo products to replace single-use plastic cutlery and that kind of thing. I mean, I don't make it myself. It is something that I have to import right now. We are looking at the possibility to get into more manufacturing if we expand, you know, if we, we grow as a business where we can do some more things locally. Yes. I do partner with Last Straw TG, who do make um, some small quantity of bamboo straws locally. So we try to get local ones if we could get them as well. Basically, in the, um, in the markets and stuff, I do get a good response um, up market, um, green market, Santa Cruz. I've found that as a good niche market for me too, to be there at least two times for the month. 
So essentially, you are within a niche market. The aim is that these eco-friendly products would become mainstream, where everyone wants to be eco-friendly, wants to function from a zero-waste perspective. But we're not quite there yet. But I'm glad to hear that the university students are interested. They would be able to drive the change. We have a, an Instagram account or Facebook I myself, based on my age group, wasn't into Instagram until I started to go on the, on the campus and I realized, okay, so for me to reach that audience, I need to get an Instagram account. We do have a website that is fully incorporated where you can actually go and shop on the website and there's a card and we integrate it with WePay. So you could pay through WePay with your credit card or debit card and we do use that now at our markets and that kind of thing. Yes, um, I saw you have an online yeah. shopping platform. So what has been your most popular item so far? We do have a wide variety of soups and I do partner with a, a co-op of ladies out of Tobago. So that so I do have extensive range. I make some myself. I definitely the artisan soups range like from scrubs, some that could be used as shampoo conditioner, the non soup based one we now started as well. Because that's the variety of that that is very popular. But it terms of individual popularities, the bamboo cutlery kit that we sell. I really, it's very hard for me to keep stock of that once I go to a market, somebody would buy it, somebody else would, you know, tell their friend to get another one. So mm-hmm. that is a, is a very, I think that may be your most popular product now, which is um a kit that is in a, a nice little cup bag that you can put into your purse. Yeah, there's a knife, a fork, a, a spoon, a bamboo straw, and two bamboo chopsticks. The pricing really is what jumps at people with that because we don't do a big market because we're really trying to, to get into the market and, you know, encourage people to make a change. So... We sell that for 65 TD and you know, people really jump on it, they think it's a really good deal. So I definitely need to get one of those and I think it would, it sounds like it would be a great gift as well. Yeah, and that's the same reaction I get from people, they think then they should get one for their mom. And it brings me to this quote, as consumers we have so much power to change the world by just being careful in what we buy. And that's by Emma right. Watson. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then um, even how much, for example, with straws, I say to people, people tell me they don't use a straw. If they tell me that, then I don't try to push selling a straw to them. But I say if you have to use a straw, you really like it to fun or you want to have it sometimes for a particular drink, then it's best to use something that isn't a plastic straw that you throw away. You know, there are different options of, of which ones you can use. We, we go with the bamboo because it's a nice thing for our theme. And I also understand in terms of making, it is it's probably has a lower carbon footprint in the production stage than a steel one. But basically, really, you don't want to get a straw. I mean, when I saw the picture myself of a straw inside a turtle's head, it's something that you do. And I would never use a plastic straw again when I see that. So that's a very vivid thing in my head. You asked a question earlier to answer that about getting people to make the change and really get an inroads into the market. Yes. So often, I mean, I'm, I'm in things where people ask me, well, who are my competitors? And I do also do bamboo straws. And they, um, I have collaborated with, um, oh, sorry, not bamboo straws, bamboo toothbrushes with... Um, Harmony, Eco, and they they really started off in, in also in sustainable products, but they started off from a background of a menstrual cup and a toothbrush and dent tabs and they have a body butter as well and a deodorant and, and stuff like that. So I actually tried when I was developing my early stages products not to compete with people necessarily, but I know we have, we have a toothbrush as well and we have a toothbrush. A toothbrush is also, as you asked, a popular products, very popular. Between me and her, we were not competitors, we, we still, because... The amount of toothbrushes that if people would make the full change they would need, we right now not big enough to supply that. Because, you know, people would still have to change a toothbrush every three months. Every three months, and, yes. Yeah. And the concept of the bamboo toothbrush is that at least when you throw that away, you could compost it if it's a bamboo thing instead of a plastic. So we actually do collaborate, me and um, how many equipment tips are, like with our social media stuff we did. We recently had a giveaway together where we were encouraging people to post on social media. They are like changes, you know, yes. how they change their habits to, to be more plastic free. We were giving away two of our products each to the winners. That was a nice collaboration and I met more people who were her customers and she would have, I guess, met some of mine. And we still have enough things to sell independently to each of them, you know, and, and, and get the movement going. So you all can collaborate instead of competing because there's room for, yeah, for yeah. everyone. Yeah. You mentioned the four R's. And the first R, reduce. That is an important practice right. to encourage. People have asked me about that before, thing, and I think that there's a reason why it's, a, it's actually important in terms of the order of it, because 
really reduces the most important one and then you kind of move to the others if you have no you know choice you know yeah i also came across another version of the four r's your four said reduce reuse recycle and recover recover the one that i came across it goes reduce reuse recycle and rethink okay, that's a good version of it as well i mean i've been in some discussions with other people too on this and they say again is, is that design is really the problem the way the whole society was designed based on capitalism and consumerism so there's just so much junk out there that we probably don't need and so i guess the rethink will come in at in terms of redesigning your whole life and the way society runs and as well too in terms of product like how i would touch it like i've decided to think okay where would this go in the end when you finish with it there's a lot of things now where people decide even though you still use plastic you kind of think okay so this is a plastic that wouldn't be single use so it's something that you could keep using all the time so yes it would be never break down but it's something that you could use for a lifetime instead of a single use yeah, so it's important to make the distinction with plastics, you know, they're single-use plastic, which is what we want to get away from. But plastic has its place in our in our day-to-day life. So it's not that right, all yeah. plastics are bad, but you want to try to avoid it as much as you can and definitely avoid single-use plastic. And even coming back to the toothbrush, when you think about it, each person is supposed to change their toothbrush every three months. And think about how much plastic waste is generating that will not degrade. So we should all definitely try to switch to more eco-friendly versions, which would be the bamboo toothbrush. Yeah, yeah. But based on like the story of my beach, my water, like when it came about, I mean, basically I could see myself sitting on the beach. I know you do yoga, meditation yourself and that kind of thing. Sitting there, kind of thinking of the whole everything in harmony. I mean, the collaborator I spoke about, and her, to the name of her company is Harmony Eco. So when you think of that, it's very hard to want to be competing. So I mean, I'm like, I'm in some business accelerators. Yes, it is. A, people think my business, when they read about it, is a not-for-profit or NGO, but it is a for-profit business. But what I see is that we're based on the principles of people, planet, profit. And again, in that order, I mean, we started off to get people safe on the beach. We still do have the uh, a safety information app on the, like, on the beach. If you go and log on, you can see, like, where people put the red flags in Maracas. If you were there, you'd put where you saw the red flag. Right. And we do have a platform where we can work with the lifeguards, but some of it, we have not put the time into it as yet. We really started out about uh, caring about the people being um, safe on the beach and then about the the whole harmony so you you want to be on the beach but we see it as the environment being equal to the people as well right so you don't you want to destroy the planet that we live on and then yes we do it i'm doing it for profit because i prefer being like straightforward i don't want people to think okay i'm running this organization and i'm getting this amount of money and i i find it was more straightforward to say look i'm doing this but i want to do this a good thing but yes if i make profit okay so that will go towards me to do whatever i want with that cash so I just felt more comfortable in that way. So that's why I can also push the business any way I want. Um, yeah, I don't get a lot of funding from different groups when you decide you're not an NGO, but I prefer doing it this way, kind of, you know, really generating revenue and pushing. I think that you could do business and still do it, you know, and not be, com- be collaborative. I think that's the future of business as well. And I think this is what we want. We want businesses that strike a balance between people planet and profit so i admire what you're doing and i i hope that you know more persons can find their space in sustainable products and sustainable living because we need more of this if it is that society is going to transition away from unsustainable practices towards more eco-friendly living humans we have the heaviest footprint on the planet right now and we are seeing the effects of this in terms of climate change and other environmental degradation issues. So if we start with these seemingly small changes, it will definitely assist with reducing our footprint on the environment. Yeah, and I, I think that well, post-COVID, what's going to come out is that people are going to see a lot of those, they're going to measure all those, those differences because there are less activities now, and so they're going to have data to be able to compare things better, you know, so say, well, look, this is what the impact that we've been having, and look how the world could be without it. But what I'm, I'm fearing too, because I work in a lot of plastic free things, is that people also are going to be afraid of contamination. Yes. And the, the views of health is going to be again in a hit in that way. So you're going to have like some back step with that. We were going to look at getting us hand sanitizer brand out. When COVID happened, we, we fast-tracked the product. So right now we have all the hand sanitizers available. And 
and it's the same concept. Like I, I see people like I sell it in this fluid, and I work with my customers. I've been selling people in a lot of um, like actually sanitize like with boiling water and that kind of thing. Cleaned up a lot of pasta bottles that I keep, pasta from sorry bottles, and I guess I've sold it to customers. And now you know I put the proper labeling on, and they agree. And then well, right now it's hard to get stock of things, but I had a little spray bottle that it worked well in, and. Basically, all of those things, if people want, they could return it to me and we could refill it up again. So I was happy to be able to, even now in this crazy thing, be able to, to, as I say, stick to my sustainability values and have things that's so not truly even for hand sanitizers. Again, it's about being mindful in our choices. So, Babita, what does sustainability mean to you? Uh, to me, it is, um, as you were saying, just now making choices to uh, continue. A lot of consumerism and capitalism is kind of like right now with no thought of what's going to happen afterwards to, the, to yourself even or, or the environment. Or When you say the environment, the animals and the water and the ocean and the, the trees and that kind of thing. To me, sustainability is being in harmony with yourself and planet and looking at it as a long-term journey for you, until your, your, your end of life as well as the other generations going forward. So it's um, about preservation, being in harmony and making choices, as you say, to, to, to be that way. So you don't have a big, big footprint so that, that you know, you don't weigh down yourself you do it in other words with your huge carbon footprint. So you can keep things, you know, going so you're sustaining yourself. You know, just take what you need until that time comes when you leave the planet. But hopefully leave it as a better place when you go. So do you have any tips to share with the listener about ways in which they can improve their sustainability in their daily lives? Um, I think it's about making small changes and also not beating yourself up because sometimes you make a change and you I use reusable grocery bags a lot. They call, I have we also have a product that we call it our beach bag, but it could be cleaned up and washed and you use you could use it on a grocery or for any other type of shopping. So I, I've gotten good into the habit of keeping it in my car all the time. But there will be times when I would have used it for something else and then I took it out and I didn't put it back. So then I still have to end up using a plastic bag sometimes. But then I would use it I would at least reuse the plastic bag a lot, so like I would actually throw garbage in it or something at least. If you forget something, like when I was making changes initially, I would forget something and then, okay, so I have to use a single-use plastic then. But but it's not about beating yourself up because eventually, you know, after a while, it becomes a habit for you and it becomes part of your daily life and it's, it's very easy. So what's next for my beach, my water? Right now, we, we, we're trying to get our website uh, more synergized. Um, we, we're looking at to get the logistics part and the delivery part to be smoothed out a bit better. We, and we want to drive more people to shopping online with us because it's, it's actually, it's, it's better for the environment and shopping online as well. Do you know what I mean, you, you don't have the carbon footprint of shopping online. It's easy. You just go on the website, see what you, you could pay online. It's not how much, you know, you're not doing much to do that in terms of activity and carbon footprint. And then we just, the only, the only part is delivery to people, which, you know, you have to, to get a card here yeah, to get it to them. So we, we're trying to drive our model to where we our online store would be the go-to place to shop with us. With COVID ongoing currently, really just, I guess, like everybody else, think it was what's going to be next because we don't know when things will come back. And we were really selling at artisan markets otherwise, other than that. My Beach My Water is part of the Shell Live Wire cohort from 2020. So we, we that will be complete graduation for that in September. So there are certain things we're working on that they may have, like they're training us and some pitching and that kind of thing. Shell Livewire is um, a global thing that Shell has where they support the fence line communities where they, where they, where they would um, do oil and gas exploration. So it really started off when there was a big decline in oil in the 80s and it started off, I believe, in Scotland. So they, they actually supported people to get entrepreneurs to, to, because if they couldn't employ them in Shell, to, to do things maybe to support child but also just businesses for the community and it's grown internationally to a big network all over the world where there's shell live wire all over where shell operates trinidad had their first shell live wire cohort last year what they do what they would give funding in trinidad is set up to ybtt the youth business trinidad and tobago and we have coaches and mentors and classes and stuff to help you with your business skills as well Thanks for having this podcast. I think it's a really nice initiative that you're trying right now to start up. And I look forward to having more podcasts and growing this. Thank you. So where can listeners find My Beach, My Water? We on Facebook as My Beach, My Water. Instagram as My Beach, My Water. And we have a website that is uh, mybeachmywater.com. Okay. So it's spelled out like my M-Y-B-E-C-H. 
M Y W D T E R. Okay, great. Folks, please check out My Pitch My Water on social media platforms. And you can also reach out to the Climate Conscious Podcast on Facebook and Instagram at the Climate Conscious. Thank you, Babita, for sharing insight into the work you are doing to encourage sustainable living and also safe and sustainable use of our beaches. Thanks, Babita, and be safe. And I hope to see more podcasts from you in the future. Bye. Bye.